Our guest speaker tonight, Dr. Harold Friedman. He's currently freelancing as a liaison between the White House, FEMA, and the Department of Homeland Security. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Harold Friedman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ed. That was uh, beautifully read. <laughs> Before I even get into my subject matter, first of all, I learned just by sitting through dinner tonight that I should not talk smack about the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> and um, I also learned that apparently you guys are a very uh, decorum, a, a very, very subtle, quiet group, <laughs> other than the cast of Jersey Shore. <laughs> particularly after I learned the only group that offers more people protection in an emergency than you folks in this room tonight are in fact the Sopranos. <laughs> and I admire your association because I think you are great, evidenced by the fact the Wall Street Journal rated your group as one of the top four organizations of your size and kind in the country, which is not as surprising as it sounds considering between FEMA you, Homeland Security, and the Red Cross, there are only about four groups <laughs> the With that in mind, Sue Kerr assured me you're going to spend so much money advertising in the Wall Street Journal this year, you're going to buy your way right up to number one. <laughs> and let me add, when I was first invited to speak here tonight, my secretary, for some reason, inadvertently wrote down the letters ABC instead of ACP. <laughs> So I initially thought I was either going to be in front of a group of innocent, young, perky kindergarten teachers or a bunch of jaded, cynical, drunk media moguls. So with that in mind, it's a relief to instead be in front of a group of people who are planning for the end of all human existence <laughs> for all of eternity. And let me add how nice it is to see so many safety officials from just about every state in the country which pretty much guarantees if there is some kind of emergency outside of Connecticut tonight, it's that much more likely to be mishandled <laughs> and turned into an even bigger disaster. <laughs> and I say all that despite the fact that I know some of you might feel my presence isn't really needed tonight and in a way is interfering, and I am here to tell you that's actually true. <laughs> My presence is not really needed. In a way, it is interfering, but we thought you should know what it feels like when you go around to your customers and clients. And <laughs> What's amazing to me is you folks work in partnership with so many terrific organizations such as the International Disaster Recovery Institute, the Disaster Recovery Journal, Personal Recovery Concepts and the Secure World Expo, and the International Consortium for Organizational Resilience. And i got to tell you, other than the National Suicide Foundation or the American Funeral Association, I've never heard a more depressing bunch of <laughs> making the finals of Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> or Charlie Sheen alone in a hotel room. <laughs> now, having said that, I do have a few serious things I want to get to tonight. And on the positive side, I'm not only here as a consultant, I'm actually also somehow being used by a group as a tax write-off tonight. <laughs> so I'm hoping between the two factors I can save enough money so next year, you can go some even nicer than here at the Chowder Pot Restaurant here in Brainerd or whatever the hell it is, <laughs> such as the Motel 6 in Poughkeepsie. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not trying to make fun of the Motel 6 chain. I stayed at one recently, and I'll tell you right now, it wasn't all that bad, although I never knew asbestos could be turned into wallpaper. <laughs> and I got a room with a ceiling fan and a fiber, but I filled it with quarters and pretended I was in a helicopter. <laughs> traffic reports. <laughs> Besides, I did a little research. I don't think I was actually first choice to speak in this time slot. 
Uh, there was a chance you were almost able to get former House Speaker Gingrich, who uh, I'm not a fan of. He did some stuff I thought was out of line, such as when he accused the Clinton White House of being 25% drug users, which I thought was outrageous until I heard former Mayor Barry of Washington say, well, that's nothing. 50% of my staff deals. Yeah, Mary and Barry! <laughs> Uh, you should sit at the other table. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All this, though, is a big reason as part of your jobs. It's very important to be able to predict the future, even though predictions depend on your attitude. For example, somebody like Brian Strong has such a positive attitude. He looks at half a glass of water, he sees it as half full. Personally, I'm more negative. I look at half a glass of water, I see it as half empty. In contrast to David Graves, your treasurer, who's worried about so many tiny, nitpicky little financial details all the time, he basically sees the bacteria in the water. <laughs> ACP online store, which is terrific, because I think there's nothing more important in the event of a Cat 5 hurricane than to have on just the right unisex t-shirt. Because <laughs> I hacked my way on your website, the password was WikiLeaks, and you guys sell some weird stuff like a bondage dispenser. I'm sorry, I mean bandage dispenser. <laughs> Although, if the guys are mobile to begin with, it would basically have the same effect. And then you have an ACP fleece shirt for that special feeling of actually being fleeced by members of your own association. <laughs> In order to more fully cross-pollinate your overall abilities, though, we're going to actively promote telecommuting and start moving some of you folks around. Beginning in April, everybody working in Texas is going to be asked to relocate to Florida. Everybody in Florida is going to be asked to go to Massachusetts. Everybody from Massachusetts is going to be asked to go to Rhode Island. Everybody from Rhode Island is simply going to be sent away. <laughs> There's no reason for this, but I figure it's so cold and boring in Rhode Island, they'll be glad if they're sent away. <laughs> Unfortunately, from what I have seen, there is very little planning for what I consider the biggest threat in the event of a catastrophe, and that is flesh-eating zombies. <laughs> Every movie about the end of the world, some people end up as zombies and some people end up as food. And judging by that table, I get the feeling I'm going to be the food. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are questions that must be asked about contingency planning tonight, such as whether the control of assembly areas in terms of lockdown time with facility control points to intercept viral attacks, computer worms, heartworms, string worms, tapeworms, and scotch tapeworms, which are, of course, the alcoholics of the worm family. <laughs> Romulans and the board will defeat the Starship Enterprise and take over the Federation while dealing with the FBI, CIA, OSHA, FEMA, EMS, PMS, <laughs> DOE, DOE a deer, DOE a female deer. <laughs> Showtime, Cinemax, and Lady Gaga. I would say that would be one question. Another question would be, what the hell am I talking about? I have no idea. I was basically just quoting David Graves the whole time. 